to order for February 2nd, 2023. Uh, this is the Administration and Finance Committee. I'll now read the uh, accessibility statement, I believe, or the notice of non-discrimination even. Uh, you are invited to participate in our transportation planning process, regardless of your race, color, national origin, including limited English proficiency, religion, creed, gender, ancestry, ethnicity, disability, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, veteran status, or background. Read the full notice of your rights and protections at www.bostonmpo dot org slash mpo underscore n o n underscore d i s c r i m i n a t i o n next slide please administration of finance committee guidelines <clears throat> all participants will join the meeting with muted microphones please rename yourself to include your first name last name and affiliation and if you choose, you can put your pronouns. Participants may mute and unmute themselves. Always remain muted unless actively speaking. To participate in the discussion, please select the raise hand function. Find this by clicking either on the participants button at the bottom of the screen and a window will pop up with a raise hand button at the bottom or the reactions button in the toolbar. I will then call upon participants as I see them. If you're on the phone, you may use star nine to raise your hand. If you have any technical difficulties, please contact the inestimable Jonathan Church via the chat box, via email at jchurch at ctps.org, or by phone at 857-702-3709. Next, I'll now read the accessibility statement. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Zoom products are compliant with exceptions with the following standards. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1 Level AA Standards and Revised Section 508 Standards. If you require any additional accommodations in order to participate fully in this meeting, please contact the unsinkable Jonathan Church MPO staff at j c h u r c h at c t p s dot o r g, or by phone at eight five seven seven zero two three seven zero nine. Introductions. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brian Kay, and I am the executive director of the MBTA Advisory Board, and I am the chair of the Administration and Finance mm -hmm. Committee. Jonathan, would you please call the roll? We'll do. Uh, Mass DOT. Eric Cravat here from Mass. Office of Transportation Planning. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Good morning, Eric Barassa with MAPC. Uh, Regional Transportation Advisory Council. Leonard Diggins, and I estimate Jonathan Church to be an amazing person, and I would hang on to him in any deep waters. Th thank you, Len. I uh, appreciate that. Um, in uh, uh, City of Boston. <laughs> And uh, Metro West Regional Collaborative Town of Framing, a uh, city of Framingham. That was a throwback. Okay, that calls the roll, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Mr. Poet Laureate. Uh, <laughs> just working with the working Sorry, with the my, my dad yeah, grew up in Framingham. The town is is deep ingrained in right, my, right, my right, psyche. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Uh, we will now move on to public comments. If there's any member of the public that would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand function. And we will call upon you and you can make your comments. Uh, if you'd prefer to comment on items uh, during the meeting, we'll try to make sure that we can get that as well. So I see that we have nine participants in the meeting and I do not see any hands raised. So as I said, uh, feel free to raise the raise hand function during the discussion items, and we'll try to get to you then. So we'll move on to item three, which is the action item. Summary of the minutes of the 15 December 2022 meeting. Uh, these were included in your email and, or excuse me, on the meeting uh, materials. 
And I wonder if there is a motion and a second to approve this item. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting. Thank you, Eric. Is there a second? Second that. Thanks, Derek. Jonathan, call the roll, please. Brian Kane. Yes. Eric. Uh, yeah. Derek Forty million yes. dollars. Eric Barasa. Yes. And Leonard Diggins. Yes. Those are approved. Yeah, Thank Mr. you. Chair. That's everyone. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the next action item, which is the summary of the January fifth, twenty twenty three meeting. I assume that's typo. Uh, I've done that many, many times last <laughs> month. So no, no worries, no worries. At least I'll I'd also be... make a motion to approve those meeting minutes. Thank you, Eric. I'm just happy I'm not being referred to as brain anymore in these. <laughs> Is there a second? Yeah, fix that. Second. <laughs> Thanks. Call the roll, please. Uh, Brian Kane. Yes. Uh, Derek Cravat. Yes. All Eric right. Barasa. So... Yes. And Leonard Diggins. Yes. And just so before I had it, uh, did Eric make the the motion? And Derek I did. Reckon? Okay, thank you. Next board yep. and tell me. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We will now move on to our um, action item or discussion rather for the operations plan, as which is why we're here. The executive director hiring process. Uh, I'll bring us through this discussion. Um, and we have a screen to share, Jonathan. Yep, uh, I'm just switching screens now. Thank you, um, sir. Uh, Miss Shanley from Easter Seals, welcome. We saw you in the chat, and we're glad you're here with us. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Judy, uh, definitely the 10 a.m. Boston NPO meeting will be more about regional, um, you know, projects and planning. So, um, just you know. I, I would encourage you to tune into that one definitely if you if you want to get more up to speed on on those issues. Yeah, this is more of an in the weeds developing an operations plan for the larger board's consideration, mm -hmm. and you're absolutely welcome here. But uh, you might find it boring. But we'd love for you to participate if you so choose. Okay. So, wow! Thank you. We are here to discuss the <laughs> process of hiring an executive director. So Eric, we're gonna lean on you a lot today. Um, it's fair to say, I believe the CTPS has not had uh, many executive directors. I think it's been three or four. Uh, Arnie, uh, I go back to Arnie as well as Carl and then Tegan. Um, there probably was someone before Arnie, but I, yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers. There was someone yeah. before Arnold. Arnie. I believe his name was Dave, uh, was Kellogg, I believe was his name. Wow, okay. The, the original, yeah. Um, wow. So there's only been five, which is just wow. four, four. four. Tegan's the fourth. What? Tegan's the fourth. Carl, oh yeah, right, you're right. Wow. So we don't do this very often is the point, which is a, a good thing, I suppose. But um, as part of the operations plan, I think it's fair to say that we should have a process down on paper that at least uh, we can refer to so that we're not reinventing the wheel every single time. Um, so what we want to do is sort of define the recruitment and hiring process uh, for the executive director of the CTPS staff and clarify the process of approving uh, their uh, annual evaluation and salary adjustments. Uh, basically, we want to codify what uh, Eric um, and, and David Moeller and Paul Regan did the last time uh, and, you know, tweak that if there's anything that needs to be tweaked, and then make sure that we are coming up with proper evaluation criteria and processes every year uh, for the executive director's um, basically annual review which is a process that I'm sure none of us like doing, but we sort of have to do. And I think it's better if we have this written down um, on paper that we can refer to it rather than not. Absolutely. Um, so thank you, Eric. So um, the 2019 certification review said the review team notes that the process to recruit, hire, and approve the executive director is not defined in the MOU, which is correct. Uh, and so the questions we want to sort of discuss today are, uh, what are our questions? Go up a little bit, please. What are our questions? Thank you about the recruitment and hiring process. And what is the process for hiring the executive director? What should be adjusted? There's a draft that we can look at for consideration. But Eric, I want to kind of turn to you at this time and, and ask you to just 
discuss your recollection about uh, when we went through this the last time and, and sort of what you thought were the strengths and weaknesses of that process and and your general thoughts on it? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, last time, um, the uh, MAPC, um, MBTA Advisory Board, is sort of the chair of, of ANF committee and, um, and MAPC is vice chair and, and MassDOT is chair, put together uh, essentially a memo that articulated the hiring process. Um, and many of the, the similar sort of steps, I think, are, are incorporated into this draft proposal. Um, and that was presented to the full M MPO board, um, you know, for their, um, you know, sort of their review. And I can't remember if we did a formal vote to approve or it was just one of these things where we said, you know, let us know if anybody opposes, opposes this process. And, um, and we had a, a first interview committee, um, which included um, uh, a number of different MPO board members. And um, and then there was um, uh, you know candidates that we um, we interviewed, uh, and then we whittled that down to um, I think three candidates that then were interviewed by um, David Moeller and and Mark Drayson at MAPC, and then there was a final recommendation made um, you know in that case Tegan to the uh, to the full uh, MPO uh, for the MPO's approval, um, and. Um, you know, I, I think it's really good, I think, to get this down on paper, because when this does happen, it's a lot of work to, to like kind of figure this out. And I think uh, it's good for everyone to just know, like, yeah, what is what is the process for kind of creating the job description and posting it and kind of whose responsibility? Um, and yeah, uh, and I think we, you know, I think because we haven't done this that much, we have kind of done it um, kind of ad hoc. And so this is great to, to operationalize it. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks, Eric. So, so questions that we sort of should discuss are, you know, is there something we should replicate or codify? It sounds like it worked pretty well last time. Folks seem genuinely um, comfortable with it. I mean, I have a couple of questions that I think we should ask, um, but it seems to me like, you know, and if we go down for the to the draft language here, uh, John, if you can scroll down a little bit. Basically, what it says is the MPO will will form a hiring committee. Uh, it it suggests who should be on that, which is the MPO chair and vice chair. Let's remember now that's the Secretary of Transportation, <laughs> and I guess whoever represents MAPC, Eric, which would be you, um, or would it be? Who has the MAPC seat technically? Is it the president of MAPC? You know, it's a good question. We should, uh, we should, I should, we should figure that out at MAPC. Um, it's actually listed as the president of your board. Yes, uh, it is. To say that. Yeah. And then you, Eric, okay. are the official uh, okay. alternate. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. So in this language here, one thing that I would suggest is we we add or their designee after the MPO chair or their designee, the MPO vice chair or their designee, and one of the following. And again, these folks can be designated, uh, can have their designees. Um, and I think obviously adding the sentence at the end that says we can add, the, the, the MPO at its discretion can add whomever it wants is fine. Um, and then it sounds like what they did last time was sort of agree on a job description Put that out there. Um, we should figure out a budget for this process because it does cost money to post these things in certain places or if we want to go through a recruitment firm. I don't know what you did last time, Eric. Do you remember? Uh, we posted it, you know, just I think it was the MAPC HR, you know, staff that posted it. Um, okay. And I think in in you know coordination with Harab because we have the same um uh neogov uh what you know site government job site um that okay. we use both ctps and mapc do that um i'm i'm trying to think i do think that we we did then post it at a few different national sites where you do have to pay and i think that did come out of the the mpo budget okay so i would suggest that one of the the first things we also do is establish a budget for this process for the hiring 
Um, that should be that could be a guideline, not not something we have to do. Um, and then that so that committee creates a job description, posts it, and receives the first tranche of applications and kind of does a triage, I would assume. Um, and that's what part two here is review and you know do the the first triaging um now part b 2b here is really interesting so it, it suggests that this committee uh consider whether an agency staff should be made acting executive director i would suggest that this was done before the position of the deputy executive director existed and so i'm curious if we think that the deputy ed should automatically do that or if we should just leave it alone and let this committee if they want to appoint the executive the deputy ed to that position because i guess what i'm saying is i think we have to have an acting executive director at least to keep the place ticking over so um, yeah it's a good question um there's there's also i think there's also a sensitivity when if if, for example, the deputy was going to apply for the position, um, you know, then they should not be involved at all in any of the hiring, you know, like they should not be privy to any of the hiring conversations. Um, so um, there could be a situation where the deputy makes it clear that they're going to apply, you know, apply for the position. But maybe, maybe that makes sense to say like, okay, you're, you're, the, you're going to be the, um, you know, you're going to be the acting executive director, but you're, you know, you're just not going to be, you know, it kept in the loop on, on kind of, you know, the, the, this stuff. Which seems reasonable. Uh, go ahead, Tegan. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's all fine. I think one of the other decisions mm -hmm. though, that needs to be made, which might need to be clarified here is if there's a salary adjustment as well associated with that. So I recognize that's not right here under B, but I think it shows up a little further down in the document. So it could be confirming who the acting is, likely yeah. the deputy, plus deciding yeah. if there's a salary adjustment. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And I I, I think that this is good because this this doesn't tie anyone's hands. It just says yeah. consider whether this should happen. And yeah, um, I agree. Right, so let's add that part of it though. Um, decide that should be recommend to the MPO the re recommend the appointment of an acting executive director to the MPO board as well as any potential salary adjustments something like that because I assume the full board should be the one appointing the acting executive director that is within their purview yeah. In addition, this committee is going to come up with uh, the candidate interview team, um, and it could be one of the same and sort of the questions uh, go through the first round of interviews. Um, I assume there's going to be some kind of a vote then to advance a certain number of folks, one or more, to the second round. Um, and yeah, designate the final interview team. So this looks all good to me. I don't know if anybody has any concerns. Go ahead, Len. Len, you're muted. Sorry about that. You know, so you that with, way. it's okay. Yeah, with respect to point number one, you know, with the advisory council being one that could be selected, you know, so, so especially since it seems like we aren't set on it being an odd number, because it seems like the, the advisory council could be one of the three that were mentioned and then the board could appoint more. I mean, um, I would like for the advisory council to be one of the three that is part of um, that team, you know, uh, just because I mean, the advisory council uh, really relies I mean, on on um, staff I mean, um, so heavily you know, um, for its functioning. I mean, and, and um, in having a, a good, having a role, a big role in determining the next director, I think would be a good thing for the council. It's not simply a statute thing, it's really a functioning thing. 
Okay, so Jonathan, scroll up a little bit, please. We'll just um, tackle this. So up on part one, uh, the MPO board members shall discuss. Um, so the committee here, Jonathan, put a note in here that it is to me of the MPO chair or their designee, MPO vice chair or their designee, and uh, put, let's put the R, R tech chair or their designee after MPO vice chair. Um, And one of the following: uh, AF committee chair, municipal board member, or well, let's see. That's three. Why don't we just do those five? Does anybody have any objection if we just make it the MPO chair, their designee, the MPO vice chair, their designee, the R tech chair, their designee? The chair of the ANF committee or their designee and a municipal board member. I'm fine with that. I like that a lot. That's five. Um, oh. trying to think here. So we're going to have the secretary, theoretically, the secretary, the president of MAPC, the chair of this committee, which is a regional, has to be a regional person. Our tech, which is the public, and a city or town. And then we can put, and any other MPO board members right. as deemed possible, as deemed convenient. Ne necessary, relevant, desirable. Sure. Tall so I have a couple of thoughts here. One is, um, I think, like he, here, we're assuming like MAPC is always the vice chair, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, I hope it'll always be the vice chair, but we 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 could there could be a situation in the future where MAPC is not. I think it would be good for MAPC to also be this, even if we're not the vice chair, because of the fiduciary um, role that we play, and technically, you know, the the, the staff. So. Um, and then I'm also thinking, you know, um, you know, you want to have a, a hiring committee that is, you know, a representation, a good representation, I think, of the board. Um, and I definitely think we want to have, you know, more than just one municipality on it, because I could see the city of Boston saying, like, well, we definitely want to be part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, at the same time, you know, we don't want you know, like a 12 person, you know, committee. I'm trying to think what we did last time. It was, it was, you know, it was still like six or seven, seven people or something like that. So I, could yeah, I clarify? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I don't mean to jump in. I just, um, I think, so there's, there's the high, there's the first round hiring committee. This separates out this executive hiring committee uh, okay. as it's titled from what the first round committee is, because what this group is intended to do is do the early work of looking back at the process putting together some of the details around what the job position looks like and should consult the rest of the board on those things, but they're not necessarily equal to the first round hiring. I really, I really feel like this should be, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like this should be like mass dot, the vice chair and the, and the chair of the ANF committee, whoever those entities end up being. And well, they use and they use this well, document as the guide to then start that process, right? Let's um, let's hear from the from Mr. Dennis Giambetti. Welcome, Dennis. Let the record well, show Dennis, Dennis is here. <laughs> good morning. Well, sorry, I was late. Um, so I, I, I and I, because I was late, I'm, I I just wanted to catch up a little bit. So the process would be, uh, I think I what I heard from taking this two committees. There's a a church committee. And then there's a what's the what does the other committee do? Sorry, so the the executive committee is supposed to be a, a tighter group of folks who kind of like run through the process. So they're not the ones necessarily making the full decisions here, but they're kind of tightening up the process 
and then working yeah. with the board to determine things um, that are listed here, including what that first round hiring committee will look like. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. intended to be a smaller group with a hiring committee, as you said, Eric, last time I was at least six people, I think that's sort of usually a bigger, more representative group, I think, for the first round. Right. So it's like, you know, we find out that the, the executive director is leaving yep. and this group, which I think makes sense to be, you know, keep it to like kind of three gets together and says, OK, here's the here's the, the operations plan. This is this outlines, you know, what the hiring process is. And so that group gets together and looks at that and then says, OK, we got to come up. You know, we got to you know, we got to pick up. A first round, you know, we got like a first round sort of interview committee. We got to, you know, put a job description together and like kind of, you know, you know, then move moves those those things forward. Right, and appoint yeah. an acting executive director or recommend an executive. Recommend, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and that first round committee, what what do they they make a recommendation to the full MPO board? So the first round committee then uh, reviews all the applications. Yeah. And they interview the candidates and then they whittle that down to, you know, say two or three, ideally like two, but could be three. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then they recommend those candidates to the executive hiring committee, I think is how, is how we're doing it here. To another committee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and then the, that executive hiring committee ideally makes, you know, a, a, a then makes one recommendation to the full MPO board. Gotcha. And so the executive committee is the one we're talking about, whether it's five or more members. Yeah, what we're talking correct? about here is, you know, should it should we keep it to just right. yeah. you know mass dot, the, right. the, the right. vice chair and the ANF chair, or should we expand that? Oh, so the five member that was outlined before, that would be for the second committee. Well, that's what we're discussing. Dennis. Okay. 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 I'm just getting a little, I'm just right. Confused. It's okay. confusing. Okay. I can't yeah. imagine why you find this confusing. <laughs> so <laughs> the Vatican's got nothing on us. Yeah, uh, I, I would I would enlarge both committees. I think a bit. Uh, the second committee, I would I would suggest that we go to seven, and uh, you have the chair, the vice chair, um, you have a ATAC member, um, and then. Um, what was the, the other one was a municipal a municipal representative, right? And what was the fifth one? Chair of ANF. Chair of ANF. Okay, fine. What I would all, what I would suggest is that we have um, somebody representing the inner core, which could be boss and somebody else, and somebody representing the regionals. So it becomes a seven member. Committee. So so you have three municipal, at least three municipal folks out of the seven. Okay, so let me see if I get this. You're suggesting it's the MPO chair, their designee, the MPO vice chair, their designee, yeah. the RTEC chair, their designee, three municipal members, one from the inner core, and one and two from other subregions. Yeah. And the chair of the administration and finance committee or their designee. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think, I think that represents uh, the full board, though, too, from a, from a numbers perspective. Is that correct? It's more representative. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, let's hear from Len Diggins, sir. Hey, but I think Dennis is talking about the the screening committee. I don't think Dennis is talking about the executive. Right. This is the second committee. The second. Okay. Committee. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so back to yeah. the first yeah. one. I mean, I see your point, Eric. I mean, about making this one small and three. I'm fine with that. I mean, I mean, but does this committee? This committee in the end is the one that is going to make the recommendation to the full board. So everything comes back to this committee in the end, the executive hiring committee, right? Yeah. And well, so that's how it happened last time. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't and happen so, anyway. yeah, no, no. So I, I guess I'm just wrestling with I me mean, whether the advisory council should be part of this or not. I mean, I mean, I think if the advisory council is part of both, I mean, the both the screening um, and the um, interview of the um, finalists, I, I'd be fine with that because that gives us a big role in helping to um, determine who that um, person is um, and, and still keep the executive hiring committee um, pretty tight and more functioning more as a technical um, body, you know, with, of course, I mean, discretion to do things as necessary. 
So I, I could go with three, me and 40 seconds if I already. Thank you. So for the first committee, what if we said, hold on, Eric, I'll get to you in a second. What if we said those three plus any other members the MPO deems reasonable? Eric, go ahead. Well, I was actually going to say, um, you know, just because in the past we've we've um, we sort of has ha have had this like two step, you know, hiring committee process. Like, I don't like I we don't necessarily have to do that, right? Like, we could just have we could have an we could have the sort of the executive let's call it the executive committee that's that's sort of you know confirming what the process is and, you know, making decisions on kind of who's going to be on the hiring committee. And then we have the hiring committee make all the decisions. I mean, that could be a way of, of doing it. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm trying to think of other, you know, other bodies if they do, you know, this is sort of consistent with kind of like how MAPC does hiring where we, we, we usually do a, a, a larger sort of panel of, of folks who do like the first interviews. And then we, that group makes kind of a, a recommendation or, 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 or identifies like a couple of people that then goes to the executive director for, for a final decision. But, um, but I'm just throwing that out there. Like, you know, that if, if people, if we're kind of hung up on the idea that the final decision is going to be made by a smaller group and more people want to be a part of that smaller group, the solution could be that like, we just have a, we have a, the bigger hiring committee, you know, makes it makes the final group. Sometimes it's harder to reach consensus, obviously, if you have more people, but um, you know, since we're just having a conversation here, I just throw that out. That's a good point. I get the way I see this and, and, and folks tell me if you see it differently when the, the executive director announces they're departing this executive hiring committee, whatever you want to call it, basically steps in and becomes the acting executive director for a short period of time. They appoint an individual to be the acting executive director and they set the hiring process in motion. And, and then the hiring process really is a bigger group of folks going through all the work. That, that's how I see it, but I, I could be, I could be reading this wrong. Jonathan church, sir. So I just yeah that's I'm, I think you just outlined what my question is. So the the board members were for the first the first committee we're calling the executive hiring committee. What I have outlined in green here, that would be those five, and then the and then there's the other committee that would actually be the hiring process. Or am I am I crossing paths here? Yeah, it is a little confusing. Eric, what do you think? And then we'll get to Dennis. I, I think you should hold on just like making edits in real time right now because okay, I, think we're, I, don't, I think we're going, we're, <laughs> going, we're going back and forth. I, I mean, I would like what I would posit is, is we have a like there's, I think there should be a smaller group at the onset that sort of use, you know, we, we have the bump, we have, you know, we have this document which really identifies like what the process is, but that group, you know, fills, fills in the details. And then to you, I agree with you, Brian. I think the hiring committee does the bulk of the work then. That's the bigger committee that, that I think Dennis articulated a good kind of list of what the membership, you know, roughly of that committee should be, like seven or so people and a, and a, and a real diversity of, you know, representation from across the, the MPO board. They do the work of, of really identifying. The I think the question is, should that group, be the group that makes the final recommendation to the full MPO board, or should they identify a couple of finalists that then goes back to the first committee, the executive hiring committee that then that makes that decision? And is there is there value in having that kind of two-step process? And and I, I Derek, you know, I look to you too because um, you know, for example, Let's say that that we really did want the Secretary of Transportation of MassDOT to be engaged in this process. You know, they're not going to be able to be engaged in the hiring committee, given the amount of meetings and work that's going to go in, involved in that. Um, but they could be involved in that first, you know, that that executive committee where, you know, where it's basically like, you know, fewer meetings. Um, so I, I think that's just, you know, uh, something to think about. Um, about like, you know, who, who, you know, if we, if we really did want like the secretary of MassDOT to play a role in here, which I think would be great, we, we would, that, 
that there could be value in having the two-step process. So I, I think it's good to, you know, it's good to discuss this. Dennis, go ahead, please. Um, I was going to say something now different after what uh, Eric just said. Has there, has there been any, uh, you think there'd be any appetite for um, the finalists to be interviewed by the full MPO board? I mean, at most of the committees I've served on, the, you know, the, the, the deciding board who actually takes the vote uh, usually gets to see the finalists, right? Whether they're two or three, interview the finalists and then make a determination on that. Is that because of the size of the MPO, you think that's too uh, cumbersome to do? Um, and that's why you have the executive committee of the three to, to come up with the, the finalists? Um, Yep. Or, or what? I mean, I've, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so let me try to, um, I mean, maybe in a very brief way, give a framework for what's outlined here, because I think it does capture a lot of this stuff. So to your point, Dennis, um, at the end of this document, it does say that the after the finalist interview team discusses and submits a recommendation to the board members, then the board has a discussion with the, with the final candidate, which is actually exactly what happened when I was yeah. um, selected as well. And so the full board will meet with them and then there's final approval by the board in an executive session to hire that. So if, if I go back up to the beginning, just to try to make it clear what the executive committee would do um, is that, so the idea would be that that would be a pretty small group and they would be the ones that like take a look at the process and actually develop a memo that includes confirm the process, you know, um, recommend that this be the interim, um, recommend a salary adjustment if appropriate, recommend what the makeup of that first round interview team that's quite large that you've been talking about, the six or seven people should be, but doesn't specify detail in this document yet, which we can do about what that makeup should look like. They would also recommend to the board in that first early memo what the finalist interview team, the second round would look like. Um, and then kind of have identify a staff member to serve as the kind of the primary HR type liaison throughout the process. So that's what the hiring committee does is they set up the stage from the start and then it goes into the first round committee, which we call the, um, um, sorry, I'm losing the name of it in here, um, the candidate review team. So that would be that larger group of seven-ish people that's representative of the makeup of the board they would review draft questions that could be pre um, prepared by the executive committee and finalize that for their needs. So they would then start to take ownership over, they take ownership over the process at that point. So they look at, doc at information that the executive committee prepared, confirm that's what they wanna use, change it, do the first round interviews, meet, discuss, do the evaluation, present those results to the, um, I think we said to, I think we said back to the executive committee. So that could be adjusted a little bit, whether it's back to the board or the executive committee. And then there's a second round interview team that then goes with the finalists and does that similar process. And then the recommendation gets made to the board as to who um, is hired in the position. So that's my like brief synopsis of all of the, the steps in here, because I think it's easy to lose track. And I, if there are any adjustments you want to make within that, that's great. Um, if you feel like anything's missing, that's great. You know, happy to make changes. Len Diggins. So to Dennis's point, I, mean, I think the question is whether or not what comes before the full board I mean, is the final list I mean, or a set of final list. I mean, because uh, the final list, I mean, essentially the decision's made, I mean, and we're just kind of signing off on it because it's hard to get to that point and then go no. You know, but you have finalists, I mean, then, then it really is an interview process that the board is making a decision. So that's the Dennis's point. Uh, the point I'm making is going back to the executive hiring committee. It, it, the only reason I'm really pressing for the advisory board to have a role in this or to be heavily consulted in this is that we are so dependent I mean, on, on the on the staff, I mean, and we need an executive director who really appreciates I me mean, the, the the dependency of the advisory council. It's not so much that we are that important. I mean, we are, but it's more so that that we we really need the support I mean, of, of of the staff I mean to yeah. function. You know, and you'd be amazed, I think, at how little a decrease in the support we get that can make a difference. I mean, into how well um, we function. So that's why I really care about our role in making sure that I me mean, that exact that interim 
Um, the interim I'm talking about now is someone that understands the needs of the advisory council because we don't know how long that'll last. And if it comes at you know critical points, it can it can it can be. I don't want to use really strong language like devastating, but it, it could be detrimental. Uh, so, so that's why, you know, so I don't know if we can really like operate, well, insert in this some way that I mean, the advisory council is at least consulted. I'm okay without doing that because I feel that we have a good enough relationship with the, um, the who would be on, on the executive hiring committee that we could make it clear that please talk with us at least before you make a decision about turnaround, but I just, reiterating why I care so much about the advisory council playing a role early in the process. Thank you. Thank you for buoying that, that discussion, Lynn. Uh, Dennis, let's go, and then we got to move on. Yeah, I guess one more comment. I, I, as I think this thing through, I would favor a more streamlined process by which you create what I would call a search committee. Um, and that search committee comes up with all of the questions, all of the processes and so forth. How are you going to do it? You, you know, you, who's going to uh, be the staff? Um, and does the, you know, the uh, uh, advertising and so forth. And they come up, do all the interviews, uh, come up with a, um, a finalist uh, list of you know, two or three, whatever. And that recommendation goes to the full board. Um, and the full board can interview those, five, those two or three finalists and then make a determination. It just streamlines the hunting the process between handing it back and forth. And it just gets a little bit, I think, a little bit more complicated. Um, but I think that's what I'm favoring at this point anyways. Okay, so you're suggesting uh, a search a search committee of, I, I assume, seven, seven members. Um, they appoint the deputy executive director and no, Eric is shaking his head. I got that wrong. No, I, I think what Dennis is saying is, you know, create, you know, it's fine for there to be, Dennis, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's yep. fine for there to be sort of like, you know, a smaller group that sets the process. They they put together the, the hiring committee and then the hiring committee interviews everybody. They make a, a recommendation to the board. Um, and Dennis, this is my question for you. Do, you. do you feel that should be like two finalists that the board interviews or, or could it just be yep. one or is it up to the discretion of no, the hiring I, committee? Yeah. We usually always out, you're up to the hiring committee. I, I, I would just have one hiring committee, you know, one search committee, hiring committee. Um, and, um, you know, most oftentimes they'll, you know, they'll, they'll present at least two finalists. But I guess in some cases you could have a single finalist, but the preference would be to have a true decision by the board okay. is to have, a, you know, a, 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 a comparison of, of, of candidates. Uh, but I would have just one committee do all of the work, um, Eric. That's streamline it. So set up the process, uh, you know, whether they hire, whether they appoint the deputy uh, or the acting is, is, you know, up for discussion. I, I really don't, I'm not too concerned about how that acting one gets appointed. Uh, there's more, how does the, 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 the uh, ultimate uh, finalist uh, gets appointed, I think is, I'm trying to just streamline it a bit. Okay, so you would, you would not even have the sort of the, the first you know, let's we're calling it the executive committee yeah. here. You yeah. would not yeah. even do that. You would just you would in this document identify yeah. exactly who are all part of the hiring committee. Um, yeah. So yeah. I feel like the challenge there is that um, you know someone needs to decide is it you know is it X community I, and I don't know if we can write that in here. So right, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I don't think I put a community, but I you know I obviously have some. Uh, seats, uh, for example, the chair of the MPO, the vice chair probably, and, and if our tech wanted to be that, uh, be that, then have the other ones open. I mean, so there's four open seats to be appointed seats, something of that nature. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know. Well, I like Dennis's idea, because if we do that, they, that, they can always appoint a subcommittee of themselves. They could, yes. To do stuff, right? Yeah. To yeah. really streamline the process, so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I and I feel like you know, Dennis, you're you're making me realize at this point that the last time this happened, we didn't have this operations plan. So the next time it happens, there really we shouldn't have the need to kind of reinvent the wheel and create a process. There should be a right. process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm coming around to your way of thinking, um, and I guess so. That's the question for 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 folks: is a a hiring stroke search committee of seven. That would be formed by the MPO, 
we'll put um, the the chair, the vice chair, and our tech on as have to be members, and then four at the discretion of the full MPO board. And then this group gets together, appoints a acting executive director, and creates the hiring process based on the operations plan. Does the search, receives the first tranche of applications, triages them, selects fo folks to go forward for a first round of interviews, comes with the questions, does the first round of inter of quest does does the first round of interviews gets back together weeds out some folks and then comes up with one two three finalists at their own discretion and then those folks get advanced to the full mpo or then we have to have the salary discussion <laughs> so the last time the salary discussion was done by david and mark Drayson. Mark representing the fiduciary agent and David representing, well, the ANF or, or the, the state. The question now becomes who should have, who should be in the room for the, for the salary discussion, for the hiring. And we still have to get to the ongoing evaluation and pay adjustment once we hire the person. But I don't want to leave this hanging. So What's on the table is a hiring committee of seven, MPO chair, vice chair, our tech, or their designees, plus four people appointed by the MPO to do all of the first round work and appoint the acting. So, so Brian, can I ask, um, this has been a great conversation, by the way, and this is why we need a committee and, you know, you think sometimes like things might be straightforward, but then, you know, issues come up here. And I think this has been a really good conversation. I I wouldn't mind taking a pause at this point. I'd like to bring some of this back. Um, I I hear what Dennis is saying about streamlining this, and I think there's there could be, I think there's value in, in, in doing that. Um, we might have too many steps here, and I think it's worth thinking about that um, and whether it does make sense for the search committee to make the recommendation that goes straight you know, to the board for the final approval. Um, I do think there's value in having kind of a smaller group of people get together right at the very beginning and kind of like use this document to like put the memo together and establish the process um, and kind of, and, and kind of like get, you know, ferret out like who's who does it make sense to like you know be a part of the board and and I, and I think there's you know there's some some discussion too about like you know making sure that the panel is a diverse panel like the individuals that serve on it are you know not going to be you know all men or something like that you know so um I, I I think there's some value there so I I wouldn't mind you know you know taking what we have here and and bring some of this discussion um at least I'd like to connect with some other folks at MAPC. Okay. Len Diggins. I'll be real quick. I understand where you're coming from, um, um, Eric. It, uh, but what Brian said that convinced me that this was okay was that me, that initial group of seven could create a subcommittee, me, that would essentially function as the executive hiring uh, committee, me. And so I think we can get 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 that within me, this streamlined process. Me, and then the board will, of course, me, in a meeting, you know, maybe even a special meeting, be having a, be deciding who's going to be on this initial um, seven person committee and then we can work out the diversity um, inclusion issues um, there. So that's it. Thanks. I guess what I struggle with is who, d who decides the makeup of that seven person committee at the beginning? It'd be the board. The MPO board. So we, we, you know, so we, we had a meeting, we say, okay, we're going to start this process. And, you know, who wants to be on the committee? And then we, like, we hash that out in a board meeting. Well, the way you say it makes me a little tentative now, but that's what I was thinking. <laughs> like, I do, no, I'm just trying to think, like, from a, like a no. process standpoint, like, you know, what I feel like would be a better, well, I mean, you, usually we would say, like, you know, who wants to volunteer, who's interested, and then and then there would be kind of a you know, a process for 
I'm just trying to think like how that happens at a full board meeting versus yeah. versus an sort of an established subcommittee already. Yeah. But, but so I don't know. Maybe, maybe these I want are to be aware of that, our time here. Yeah. Folks. These are probably Eric, the details. I that, think you're. I think Eric's correct. We're going to have to leave this here. Um, there's lots of questions. We will need to meet again. Teg and Jonathan, I'm looking at you for when our next meeting is. Uh, we will have to decide the process for the interim when an executive but between executive directors as well as the hiring committee and process and we still have to get to remuneration and ongoing evaluation would you like us to try to create a more streamlined version of these steps that we have now and maybe like two alternatives or something to look at as to how that process could look based on this discussion and That'd then you great. could have that to kind of compare and contrast and i think the next meeting would be in two weeks okay so yes, please, please. Thank you. I see lots of heads nodding. Okay. Uh, and then in two weeks, we'll have to move past this and 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 make a decision. Okay. Thanks. Um, cool. Let me just see. Is there any public anybody from the public that would like to comment on this? Seeing none. Okay. Is do we have any other business to do? I don't think we did. We don't. Okay, so is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Without objection, we are adjourned. See you all in seven.